Hey everybody, and welcome to the very exciting follow-up to last week's Module MCX Spear devlog. Uh, this week, City Robo and I, Code God City Robo, uh, and I have been working together to uh, touch up the final feature set for the XM157 Fire Control Optic. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into what's new. Um, so firstly, uh, I added some lens caps uh, to this um, and in fact on our um, alternative ballistic calculator list uh, XM157 uh, we can see that I have added the module workshop skin system and uh, lens caps as a module workshop item. Uh, these also come in black and coyote. Uh, so obviously that also applies to the um, full fire control optic as well. Um, but let's go ahead and get started with the most exciting thing, in my opinion. And that is the actual fire control interface. We've got five buttons here. The center button is for the automatic zeroing, uh, as we're used to. But if we press any button, it brings up a menu that we can interact with. Um, just for the sake of visibility, I'm going to set these lens caps to uh, black and we'll close this front one. There we go. So, uh, as we can see, we can cycle through several options. Uh, we can turn our visible laser on and off. We can turn our compass on and off. Uh, there's our reticle changing options. We can change the color of everything. Uh, we've got green, yellow, red, and orange. Uh, and of course, we can change our brightness. Um, how this generally works is you can press any button and it will bring up the interface for about two seconds before it fades away. Um, and then from there, you know, you can make your input. Um, let's go ahead and turn our laser on. There we go. Um, and just so you know, this laser, uh, is slaved to the optic. Uh, so it's a little bit hard to tell here, um, but maybe at longer distances. There we go, we can see that no matter where we're looking, where the zero is, that laser uh, is slaved to the center of our reticle. Um, so that's the visible laser, we can turn that off. Um, obviously here is our uh, compass control, so if we, as we zoom in, there's that compass again. Uh, we can go ahead and turn that off. And then zooming back out to 1x, Moving down to the reticle selection, we have two, four, six, and eight MOA. Um, so in kind of close combat scenarios, that, that larger 8x reticle uh, is, is pretty nice. Um, but if you still want to take some more precise uh, 1x shots, that 2x reticle is there for you. Uh, and then lastly, um, we've already gone through our, our reticle options here, our color options. Uh, I'm actually a really big fan of orange. Uh, something about it just sits right in my eye. Uh, and then, actually, let's change back to orange. And let's go through the brightness settings. We've got seven brightness settings uh, going from zero, which is kind of like a night vision type um, brightness. Four is the standard. And seven is definitely very bright, uh, especially when you zoom in. So that is almost everything new with the XM157 FC. Uh, the interface here uh, is brand new. It may take some tweaking. Um, you know, I'm gonna get this out to QA as soon as possible, get some feedback on if the triggers need to be larger or you know, any tweaks need to be made. But the final most important part and the last thing that I don't have an icon for is the XM157 pressure pad. Uh, this particular pressure pad uh, is directly responsible for zeroing without pressing, uh, without having to take your hand off the uh, weapon. So right now I'm holding on to the handguard, um, using my trigger to stabilize, and then I press down on my touchpad, or you know whatever face button that may be for you. Um, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit further here. Uh, just press down. It auto zeroes and we can take our shot. Let's go ahead and take this out to 
Bam, 546 meters. First shot, there we go. It's much more stable, um, much more convenient just being able to do that right off the rip without having to, you know, futz around with any menus or anything like that. So, that is uh, probably the most exciting stuff with the XM157. Some more, um, I suppose, just general uh, information uh, about this. This also does respond to your different gravity settings. Uh, so if we set our ballistics gravity to moon and then take it out to 700 meters, we can see there's almost no drop. Uh, additionally, I'd like to point out that uh, the further away you are trying to zero, you can see that temporarily our pre-zero pops up and our rangefinder blinks. Um, it is calculating your drop in that time. Um, it's still very fast. Uh, it usually is unnoticeable until you're kind of really pushing past 500 meters, depending on the speed of the round. Um, obviously, things like 22. If you try to zero to 500 meters, it's already going to, you know, kind of think about it for a little bit. But uh, for most use cases um, in H3's kind of combat sandbox, it is largely instantaneous. There we go. So that is everything for the spear here. Um, pardon me if I've already shown this off, but we also have the SLX 6.8 suppressor in Coyote and in black. Um, I would do this kind of like the module workshop skin system way, but it seems to interfere with the uh, overheating system that I'm such a fan of. So compromises do still have to be made. But that is all for this week. I hope you are all very excited. Let me know what your favorite feature of the XM157 is. Um, and in general, I've also included uh, City Robo's Kofi link, Kofi, whatever. Drop him a donation, buy him a drink. Uh, this scope is well worth it, in my opinion. Anyways, support your local creators, uh, and we will catch you in the next one. Take care. <laughs>